Hi. Hello, everybody. Uh, hope you're doing well this evening because it is evening here where I am. And this evening we're going to be talking about uh, a short story, Yellow Woman, by Leslie Marmon Silco. Uh, Leslie Silco is a Laguna Pueblo American Indian, Native American, if you prefer that term. Uh, as she's no, written several novels besides a collection of short stories and known probably primarily for the novel Ceremony, one of her first. This short story has one of the most sensual first sentences of many stories I've read. Uh, My thigh clung to his with dampness, it begins, and then, uh, then the narrator is aware of the sunrise coming up. It's a first-person story. Uh, told in the eye, that means. And uh, th there are four essentials you want to keep in mind as you look at this story. And I should say that the number four is a spiritual uh, number to most every uh, American Indian because uh, of the four directions, the four seasons, and the four elements of the earth, which would be uh, earth, air, water, and fire. Uh, those would be the elements, the four elements they'd see as composing uh, the earth itself and, and combining to make uh, people too. Uh, in fact, they might refer to grandfather rocks because uh, some tribes believe that that's how uh, the early uh, generations appeared. Anyway, in this story, too, you have uh, four relationships of yellow woman that you should keep your eyes on. Her relationship with Silva, who's the one she's lying with as the story opens. They're lying in a red blanket on white sand. Some nice uh, colors to draw your attention. Uh, so there's a relationship with, with Silva, who's also referred to in question about whether he's a Kachina or not. A Kachina is a, to the Pueblos, is a mountain spirit, a spirit uh, power that can do things like send uh, animals to people or change people to animals and or give uh, animals a person's nature and so forth. Uh, the second person to keep in mind is her grandfather who's told her tales of the Kachina. Uh, the third is her family which uh, she's going to re be referring to here and there in the story. And uh, at its culmination, we'll see them, or anyway, get glimpses of them. And then there is that uh, legendary person, that Kachina for, that uh, it's always questioning whether she's in a relationship with that or that Kachina has caused the relationship she's in. And uh, those sorts of elements are all taking place in the story. I'm not going to resolve them for you uh, because I would like you to work them out for yourself if you're going to write about the story. You can bring out its meaning to you in your interpretation of it. Uh, so she wakes in the morning lying with this uh, with Silva uh, and uh, she's hungry and she seems she's going to head home. She goes over to where a couple of horses are. So apparently the two have ridden horses down to this uh, creek or small river where where they've been lying in river sand, not uh, beach sand. And then she decides not to go off and she goes back to Silva. And uh, he says, you're coming with me, remember? And she doesn't remember anything of the sort. Uh, ha how she remembers all everything is that she t went for a walk along the river and ran into him. He was uh, slicing leaves off a lemon, uh, off a willow branch, I, I should say, off a willow branch with his lemon colored knife. No, he, he's, he's uh, slicing willow leaves off a little branch with his little knife. And the next thing she knows, uh, I guess she's on the red blanket. Uh, so she questions, is he Kachina? And uh, it kind of amuses him. And then she says her old grandpa, she, she always refers to him as her old grandpa. Some grandpas aren't so old. But anyway, she refers to 
him as her old grandpa. And uh, he tell and she relates a story that he used to tell her of how the Beger, Beger, how the that's a kind of a knee jerk badger, how the badger and the coyote uh, discovered in a house a woman who said she would lie with them both. And the the uh, coyote, and generally the coyote is seen as uh, the wily coyote, as you do as you see him, uh, a transformation of him into uh, cartoons. He's the wise guy who is always up to something. And uh, here he tells the uh, badger, "Listen, I saw this uh, groundhog hole, or uh, was it a uh, a prairie dog hole?" And I think I saw something down there. You ought to go check that out. So the badger goes down the hole and poof, the cow plugs up the hole and has a woman to himself. So you see the transformation that her grandfather's telling her about happens through a katina. And these are sorts of, the, sorts of uh, situations people seem to fall into because of that. So uh, she she's come from a Pueblo, uh, and, and you should... Note that Pueblos tend to live in a, a Pueblo, <laughs> a, a little house uh, usually made of uh, adobe or more often, especially in their early existence, in caves, in, in uh, walls of cliffs. And uh, there's also Navajos uh, involved here who are a related tribe and, and Hopis also refer to the Kachina. Kachina, a southwestern Indian uh, spirit, uh, pretty much related to uh, Arizona and New Mexico, uh, Native Americans. So uh, then they, they go from the beach on their horses up to uh, his house, up to Silva's house. He has a house and it's made of black lava rock and red mud. Uh, apparently, whatever is available to use for a, that sort of building. Uh, that's what's uh, what we see at Silva's house. Okay, section two, and note also, the story has four sections. That number four again. And uh, I think that you'd have to say that Silco is emphasizing uh, that number four and the combinations of it you find in the story so in section two uh he has a cook stove there and they fire it up or actually it's a round stove they fire it up and she uh peels and cooks potatoes for them both and they have a little bit of a meal and uh then he he talks about uh Texans who have ranches uh, down the trail from where they are. And the, he says the Mexicans run some cattle over there. And she says, do you ever work for them? And he said, I steal from them. Uh, so we have a sudden change or aspect to his personality that we weren't aware of before. And she's wondering again, well, then could he be... Uh, a Navajo, because Pueblos don't do that sort of thing. So she's saying uh, there are ethics in our tribe that you obviously don't have in your tribe. Uh, then again, uh, she's been uh, lying with him on this uh, red blanket and white sand. And uh, we learn that she has a family, Al, her husband. And she talks about her grandfather and she has children. She has two. We'll we'll get to that as we move along. Uh, then uh, she's think she thinks now about her family uh, far below her. They'd be at the foot of the mountains. They're up in the mountains here, and generally Navajos would be in mountains more so than Pueblos. They would be down closer to the land, and. Uh, she thinks that her family is going to file maybe a police report with the tribal police <coughs> excuse me but she says but if old grandpa weren't dead he would tell them what happened he'd laugh and say stolen by a kachina a mountain spirit she'll come home they usually do and uh 
she doesn't yet. And uh, when she comes back, she goes for a walk. And when she comes back, uh, she sees Silva has a beef hanging and he's butchering it. Uh, so we, 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 we've heard him say before that he, he steals beef. And now uh, in section three, they're riding along a narrow ridge road uh, or trail that's steep on both sides like an animal's spine is how it's described. And uh, she says that uh, Silva saw him before I did. Remember, this is written in first person. Uh, it's a white man who's riding a big gray horse and he's coming up the trail toward them. And he stops and uh, he says, where did you get the fresh meat? And Silva says, I've been hunting. And the hell you have, Indian, you're stealing cattle. A wrestling cattle, the man says. Uh, we've been looking for the thief for a long time. So he figures he has them trapped now. And Silva tells uh, the yellow woman to ride back up toward the house, leave here. And that seems to upset the uh, white man, who's described not very fairly as sweaty and smelling and... Uh, he seems afraid, and perhaps he doesn't have a firearm with him. And we know that Silva has a rifle, a 30 30. Uh, a footnote, by the way, if you don't know what a 30 30 is, a footnote explains to you what it is in this story. Uh, he has it in a leather holster uh, on the horse. And uh, so she rides away, and then she hears four shots fired. And she says, I remember hearing four hollow explosions that reminded me of deer hunting. That would mean it's a rifle going off, not a pistol. Why four shots? Who knows? Maybe he decided he had to take care of the man's horse, too, so he could get to town and sell the beef and before the man was found. Who knows? That's kind of left up in the air. And now the yellow woman leaves. She walks back along the river. Uh, she can see the dark green tamaracks that grow along the river. And beyond them, the pale sand rock mesas. And then she knows that uh, she's, he can't be a kachina because she realizes there are roads and pickups and a modern world taking place out there. So we hit section four, which is the culmination of the story. And she's walking along the river on a wood hunter's road, probably a, like a logger's road. And she knew it gener would someday or soon lead to the paved road and there she could wait for somebody to drive by, but no, she'll keep walking, she decides. And uh, she thought about Silva and felt sad at leaving him, uh, but there's something strange about him, and she tries to figure it all the way back home as it's put. And then at the end, I followed the path up from the river into the village, and I could smell supper cooking when I got to the screen door of my house. I could hear their voices inside. My mother was telling my grandmother how to fix the jello, and my husband, Al, was playing with the baby. I wanted to tell them some Navajo had kidnapped me, but I was sorry that old Grandpa wasn't alive to hear my story because, because it was the yellow woman's stories he liked to tell best. Ooh, what a wonderful ending because we've got the family now, we've seen Silva, we've seen uh, the Kachina, and now we've seen the grandpa talking about the yellow woman, one of the myths of the legends of the area, and that yellow woman is now her. The end.